Hi, today's class is called Areas Under Curves. Now, in Calculus 1, we would take a function, y equals f of x, and we would take a particular point on the function, and we would say, you know, at some x value, I know I'm using x twice, but whatever, and we would say, how's it going? What is the slope of the tangent line at that particular point? And that was the derivative, as if we're looking down on a road, and if you were driving on this road and you hit an icy patch right there, which direction would you head? What, where is the car pointing at that particular time? Now, while one group of people was all, were all concerned about that, another group was looking at this saying, what is the area under this curve? And the area under the curve is called an integral. That is what we are introducing today. Now, they seem quite different because the derivative, for instance, is talking about a particular instant at that exact single point. How's it going? Where are you headed? Up, down, steep, not very steep. Whereas the area of the curve is talking about sort of the accumulation of all the values you had. You know, you have to add up this area and this area and this area and this area. So, you know, over here the values are fairly high, down here the values are less, but you're still getting some area. You're adding up all this amount. Now, the way that we represent an area under a curve is in the following fashion. We use this weird notation. It's weird. What does it mean? It means the area between the curve given by y equals f of x. That's what the function on the inside says. It says what's the function that we're looking at. Um, between the curve y equals f of x and the x-axis from x equals a to x equals b. And I know you're thinking, you're thinking, where are all these x's coming from? Why is it the x-axis? Why is x equals a? Y equals x equals b? Because of this dx. That turns out to be quite important. I almost look at this dx as part of a handle that goes with this thing. You can't have one of these things without one of these things. In any case, what does this look like? It means we have some function, y equals f of x, and we go from x equals a to x equals b, and we add up all of this area. And in general, it's not an easy thing to figure out. What is the area of this weird curvy thing? I mean, you could estimate it, and there's many ways to do that, but to get exactly what the area is can be a very difficult question. Uh, one caveat, and that is, go back to the large font. Um, if the graph goes below the x-axis, that area counts as negative. Uh, this function that I've drawn seems to be entirely above the x-axis, but if it went below the x-axis and you happen to be concerned about a point over here, you're going to have a negative answer. You've got to figure out what that area is, and it will count negatively. Let's take an example. Let's say we have a function. And let's just give it graphically. Let's say the function is a constant 3 for quite some time. And then as soon as you hit the point 2, it starts curving down with a slope of negative 2, let's say. This would have to be a piecewise defined function. So be it. So we're going to call this function f of x. Well, what is, for instance, instance the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x, dx. We are saying, what is the area of this function from x equals 0 up to x equals 1 
between the curve and the x-axis. Well, that's a rectangle. That's a rectangle with three squares of area. Pretty sweet. Well, what if we wanted the integral from 0 to 2 of f of x dx? Well, that just extends it. We want the area. That's what this whole squiggle means. The integral is the area. The area under this curve, between this curve, y equals f of x, and the x-axis from x equals 0, now all the way up to x equals 2. And what is that? Well, there's... Not too hard to figure out. There's six squares of area. Let's say someone gave you the integral from 2 to 3 of f of x dx. Well, now we start at 2, and we go to 3, and oh lordy, it's a rhombus. No, it's a trapezoid. It's a trapezoid. Well, it's not so bad. Um, I'm going to look at this as a big triangle minus this little triangle. And the big triangle has a base of 1.5 and a height of 3. Yeesh. So the big area is 4.5 divided by 2, which is 2.25. And then we subtract out this. It's got a height of 1 and a width of 0.5. So that's 0.25, which would be 2. And if you think about it, there's a cool trick that you can do, and that is if I then asked you to figure out something like the integral from 0 to 3 of f of x dx, which is 1, 2, 3, which is this area, we don't have to go through that whole process again because we already know that the area from 0 to 2, that's 6, and the area from 2 to 3 is 2, so clearly the area, let's move this over a bit, so clearly the area from 0 to 3 is going to be the area from 0 to 2 plus the area from 2 to 3, which is to say if 6 plus 2 is 8. And that's a nice trick. We can abbreviate this in general by saying the integral from a to b f of x dx plus the integral from b to c f of x dx is the integral from a to c f of x dx. You add up all the area from A up to B, and then you extend it from B up to C, and what have you got? You just get the area from A up to C. And that can be a very handy trick at times. Let's say we want the area from 1 up to 5 of f of x dx. Well, now we have a bit of a problem. Here's 4 and here's 5. Now what we have to do is we have to take all of that area and subtract all of this area. But in fact, now we want this area to count as positive and this area to count as negative. And with a little bit of argument of symmetry, we can see that this positive part cancels out with this negative part because they're both triangles, they have the same shape, they're one and a half, one and a half by three. Uh, let's just say it does have a slip of negative two, so yes. In which case it's again really the same as the integral just from one up to two, zero up to two, which is six. The six back again. So, here is one more detail. If you wanted to do something crazy like go from 0 to negative 2 f of x dx, well, you're thinking about going from 0 to negative 2 
you're sort of talking about this area, another six. However, we would like to be able to have the integral from zero to negative two f of x dx plus the integral from negative two to zero of f of x dx to add up to the integral from zero to zero f of x dx using that rule. This one ended up where this one started, so if you go from zero all the way up to negative two and then extend it from negative two up to zero, you'd have the integral from zero to zero. The integral from any point to the same point is basically an infinitely thin area. That red line, just the infinitely thin bit, which should be zero. I'm making this much too complicated, but really what it means is this, if you have these in the wrong order, if you go from zero to negative two instead of the usual from the left to the right, negative two to zero, you end up getting the negative area because adding up everything from negative two up to zero as an area of six to go backward from zero to negative two undoes it so that when you add them all up, you get negative six plus six equals zero.